Welcome to chapter one of the test automation in Python course. My name is Carlos Kidman, and I'm a QA manager and senior software engineer in test. Since this is a programming course, I will transform into my cyber alter ego that goes by the name of Carlos Kidman. I want to preface this course by letting you know that I'm making quite a few assumptions about you. Uh, there are many tutorials out there already to get you started and give you the whole hello world examples. So because of that, I'm assuming a few things. Number one, I'm assuming you know a little bit of programming. Number two, I'm assuming you are in some form of testing role or are looking to get into testing in some way. Number three, I'm assuming you already have Python and PyCharm installed. If not, please pause the video and do this. And of course, I'm assuming that you'll be brave enough to write me on Twitter or LinkedIn to provide any feedback or ask for questions or even demo your code. Um, I really want this to be for you guys and I'll make a whole other course around how to get started with Python and that kind of stuff. But for now, I really want to get to the more advanced things and really just dive into the first couple chapters. Let's just get PyTest out of the way. Let's get uh, your first Selenium test out of the way. Let's get, let's get that out of the way first so we can really just dive into the good stuff. So the first few chapters, maybe some basics and whatnot. I just want to make sure that each person is already on the same page uh, so we can move forward once I start getting into more advanced topics around test automation. Let's start this off on the right foot. Knowing how to automate tests at any level is super important because of continuous testing. Continuous testing is the key to DevOps and it increases confidence for you and your entire team. Every discipline, really is in charge of some aspect of testing, but in the end, QA owns the overall strategy. You should want to help on continuous testing. I, I really think that if you're not doing so and not working on automation, I mean, I, I just feel like there's a lot of opportunity you're missing out on. So <laughs> really, please do it. Uh, I can promise you that knowing how to do this will open many doors and opportunities for you. I mean, just here in Utah, USA, we have so many businesses that are looking for test automation engineers. If you know a little bit of programming and you know how to focus that onto testing, holy cow, the opportunities that are here. Seriously, every organization that I talk to is wanting test automation. So if you're joining this and you're watching this, hopefully you're starting out and you're ready to dive in because there is so much waiting for you and there's so much potential and the ceiling is so high that this is a whole career and I think you're going to love it. All right, all right, all right. Enough talking and more testing. Let's dive into code. All right, so here we are in PyCharm and I made my own project called Python Training. Feel free to call it whatever you'd like. We're gonna start by installing PyTest. With pip install PyTest. This will get PyTest onto our machine and ready to go. Perfect. And now the next thing we'll do is we're going to go to preferences or settings, go to tools, and we're going to set PyTest because by default, it's actually unit tests. So it changes from unit test to PyTest, apply, then okay, and that's all set. And then the last thing I'll do is confirm that PyTest is working in the terminal by running PyTest. Sure enough, there it is. Beautiful, we'll say cleared, awesome. So first thing we'll do, we need to put our test somewhere. So let's make a new Python package and we're going to call this package just tests. There we go. And inside of here, let's make our first test file. So new file, I will call this one test underscore chapter one dot pi. Okay, now in here, we're gonna start with a coding challenge. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. Hopefully this one is pretty straightforward, but it's a common one. Write a function that takes a string argument and have this function return the number of vowels in the string. So if I were to start with this, I would say define vowel count, we pass in our string, and then here I'm gonna paste this line in just so you don't have to see me struggle bus A-E-I-O-U, but there's our vowels. And then from there, we'll set a counter uh, just to zero. Right now we're going to assume there are zero vowels in it. At that point, we'll then just do a simple for loop. We'll iterate through the list. So for each character in our string, if the character is in our vowels, then we know, hey, let's count it. 
So there we go, we add one to our vowel count. And at the end of everything, we'll then return the count. So there you go, simple enough, right? Not too bad. Now the thing is, if I wanted to actually show that this is working as expected, right now most people do like a console.log or a print. So let's try that out. Let's print vowel count, we'll use my first name. Second one, vowel count, we'll use my last name, Kidman. Wait a second, why is it green? Hold on, let's check this thing out. It says it's a typo. Hey, you're a typo, Python, what the heck? All right, fix that. And now let's run it. So Python test slash test chapter one dot pi. Sure enough, two, two, there you go. Carlos has two vowels, Kidman has two vowels. Now that doesn't work very great for testing because I just printed something, it didn't give me a pass or fail, let me know that it actually worked. It just printed information out. So now we're going to write a test. Remember, this needs to start with the word test. We'll test my first name, and we know that the vowel count should return two for my first name. So we'll pass in Carlos, and we'll say this should equal two. If that passes, we know it worked. If it fails, we know we broke something. We'll copy and paste it, but this time, instead of my first name, We'll change it to my last name. No typos this time. Jokes on you, PyCharm. And then we'll change the signature as well from first to last. Perfect. And then what we'll do is there's another way of running it. You see these green triangles all of a sudden appear. We can actually click on that and that will let you run the test or debug the test. Ooh, very cool. So we're going to run the test and we'll see it pass. And it passed very quickly 0 0.03 seconds. Wow, so impressive. All right, so now what we'll do is we're going to change from first name just to be my entire name instead. So just my name, Carlos Kidman. Uh, so space, Kidman, and then the two it should now be a four, right, because there's four vowels in there. And then this one, instead of being just my last name, we're going to say my uppercase name. Hopefully you guys are seeing where I'm going with this. We're now going to get rid of Kidman, and I use Carlos Kidman all capitalized. That should also be four. But if I run this test, hopefully you saw it already. Rut row, it failed. Scroll all the way down and it says, hey, you're trying to assert that zero is equal to four. Vowel count returned zero vowels, even though we know there are four and that's why it failed. Catching this and letting us know there's a bug inside of our code. So let's scroll back up to our function and let's see what we did wrong. Going back up here, we'll see our vowels, A, E, I, O, U, are all lowercase. We're not actually checking uppercase. Quick fix, string dot lower, and now any string we pass in is now going to be lowercase by default. We'll run the test again, and now it passed. But notice how easy it was for us to fix it, but the tests caught it, right? Now that's what makes the power of testing so awesome is that we can actually write these tests and as we're coding, we can keep running these tests and make sure that our changes are still working as expected. Let's try this in the terminal now. Instead of Python, we'll say pytest tests slash test chapter one, and that'll actually run the tests in this file, both passed in 0 0.02 seconds. That's pretty blazing quick. Nice, you guys made it to the end, but did you really think that was it? Not at all. If anything, you got two more challenges that I'd like you guys to do on your own time. So challenge number one is to write three more tests. This would be for that vowel count function. And what I want you guys to think about is from a tester's perspective, what makes a good test? Because as you saw, we could just keep putting names in. My middle name, my family's name, people's names all around, Fido and and Rufi and all that kind of stuff. We could make up names and just test a bunch of names, but is that really helpful after testing my name. What other strings could we come up with? What makes a test valuable or high quality versus another type of test? Hmm, something to think about. For the next one, challenge two, you need to write a new function. Feel free to do this in the same file if you'd like or make a new test file, really up to you. But you need to write a function that takes a string and returns the shortest and longest words within it. You can assume the string will be something like a cow jumped over the moon or really anything else, but you need to write as many tests to make sure that your function works as expected. Hopefully both of these exercises will help you out and kind of start putting you in the, the testing mindset. Um, 
But at the end of it, hopefully you'll have a better idea of not just how to use PyTest, but also how to do a few things in Python. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can hit me up on LinkedIn or Twitter, or you can email me as well. And make sure to visit us at qap.dev. QAP, of course, for QA at the point. Thanks, guys, and have a wonderful time. Happy testing. Mm -hmm.